Hello everyone, it's Christina with Kilpin's Creations. I am working on some more beads today. These beads are going to be interesting, different. I saw a video that was from two years ago of uh, Russelline, I believe her name is. But you have to watch her because she don't speak English. So these are what I'm working on today. They're kind of neat. wasn't really sure what to expect. I made quite a few of them. Oh, let me get that focus better. Yeah, there we go. So, and I did them in different colors. Today we're going to do purple ones and blue ones. Here's another one. This one I like. It's just too big for what I was wanting it for. So. Just so you guys know. Okay, I just make sure that it stays in the right place. Now I did take one here, and I put some of the uh, Lisa Pavlaka Magic Gloss Resin, and I put some glitter in it. And it, it stands out, it has its sparkle, it catches your eye. I'm just not sure if I like the flake, the type, type of flower bead it's supposed to be. And then I thought I'd try it as a flower. So I used the one that I didn't like. Because the red was too dark. Where this red is nice and bright. So, and I put some petals on it. But that just makes it a lot bigger than a B2 for me to use. If, even if I stuck it down this way. I had this to be the top. It's not going to do what I want, I don't think. So anyways, I figured I'd go ahead and show you the technique of how I did them. And I've got the timer set to let me know when it's time to shut down and start a new video. So just in case I have to do this in two parts. So first of all, we need to focus down here. Okay. Now, I don't know if you all know what a Skinner blend is, because I haven't gone through the basics of any of this yet. But a Skinner blend is where you take two collars, cut them diagonally, put them together. After you get them put together, you roll it, roll it so it sticks together. And then you fold it in half and roll it through the pasta machine over and over. And you end up getting a blend like this. Okay. Now this one here, I did the different colors on it. So the variegated one is on the outside where the solid color is on the inside. So we are going to take this. And we're going to line these up. Right now I have these rolled out to a three setting. So, let's pull this apart a little bit. This has to go. And I am going to end up rolling this to, uh, what did I do with my hand up? Right there. I know you can't see my pasta machine, but there is no place for me to put it on my table without knocking everything over when I use it. So, we'll just do it like this. Now, this has been rolled out to a four. So what I do from here is I use this little grid here. You can find these in the quilting area of uh, Joann's. And these are one eighth of an inch squares. And I like to use these so I can line everything up. So first of all, let's get rid of part of this because I won't be using all of it on one bead. I 
get over here. And then we're going to want to line all the edges up. So I'm going to make quarter inch squares on this one. I like the smaller squares better than the bigger ones. You can see the size there for the difference. Plus I want a smaller bead too, that's one of the reasons. So we're going to cut, I'm going to line it up with these lines here. See the purple is right here. So I'm going to go up to this heavy solid line. And my head is probably going to get in the way. But see I lined it up. <clears throat> blade is right over the line. And all I got to do is push down and it comes up. And you have a nice straight edge. Yeah, that's a little off. There's a nice straight edge. Oh, I wanted to let you guys know too that when I combine clay and do Skinner blends, I work with this cutter here. I roll and condition my clay, and then I use this cutter to cut it out. I left this piece up here for. And we just cut it out like that. And then I take my blade and cut it corner to corner and bring that top half onto this one so it is a double layer. I do that just in case I made something that I really liked or if I have to remake it. It's easier for me to remember how much I used to make that blend. See if I can get this line back up after I moved it. Okay. And then this way, I'm going to come. Then after that, what we do is I'm going to go two of these little squares all the way up. That will give me a quarter inch. that happens, try not to pull it or anything because it will stretch. Okay, I lined it up with that one, so I'm going to go with this dot. Okay, let's get a piece of towel. And my blade gets sticky like that. I like to wipe it down. Water does work as a resist. So you're gonna go down this way. But not for today, huh? some more squares here. Start the 
stick again. Okay, so now we have all these little squares, and we want to look with the, you can start with either end, like this one here, I started with the blue and ended up with the light purple on the outside. This one, I started out with the yellowish. It was irrigated to a green and to a turquoise. So you can pick whichever one you would like to get to be in. But what you're going to do is you're going to take your little square and push it down just a little bit so it sticks to the mat. Then you want to take this corner here and roll it. Make sure you can see that. Let me turn my other one around. Does that help any? My camera is higher than my lights are. Okay, that's better right there. So you're making this little, well, what do you call it? But anyways, again, We're wanting to start with the bottom row and work our way up, or we want to stop, start with the top row and work our way down. That's entirely upon the person who decides they want to make it how they want their colors to go. Now this one here looks like it got a little messed up. And you can go with a lighter shade inside or a darker shade. This one I did an orange shade. This one I did an orange and brown mix. And the brown turned into a most dark peach. And then I used a solid orange on the inside. This one here I just did a flat black and white. I took two, the two layers, a black layer and a like this. And I just put it in the pasta machine until it got down to my um, four, number four setting. That one is messed up. So let's do this one.
hands are getting sticky. too hard. Let's see if I can get that closer. Focus that. That's as close as I can get down here. Yeah, I'm not getting a very good image. Let's see if we can show you the, the um, close up. Do one up here closer for you guys. Where's the camera? Oh. Okay, so we have the little square. Stay in the frame. And we just want to tap this little corner right here up so it'll start doing a roll. So when it starts doing the roll, you see it there, just push up with your thumb and go up. And then you get your little roll here. Stay focused. Oh, I've got to get me a camera. Do another one here. Start that corner up. And roll it. Okay. So then after that, you get all, these all rolled up. I usually do two or three rolls at a time because side by side they're not that different. Well, if you take one from here and try to put one of these, there's definitely a difference. You don't get the variegated look that way. Ooh, excuse me. So next, I use the 13 millimeter ball. I'm not sure if I showed you this in the last one when I did the roses or not. But I took some scrap clay that was with this group. So it'll all match. And then these are rollers. Come apart like that. You get three different sizes. 13, 18, and 16. Yep, 16. And then they each have their own little cup. 
like this one here. This one's for the 16. You can see how much it's, it is bigger than the 18. But since I'm wanting it small, and these tubes are going to be on a little on the large side, I need that one. You can fill this little hole up here. Okay. Fill this little hole up. And then I take my blade. And the number side is over here, so I take that so I can slice through it, but the numbers stop it so I don't cut my thumb. Very important. And then with some of them, doesn't look like you're getting the exact amount, so I don't know if maybe I scraped part of the uh, plastic because I use this one so much. Then you get that and you just roll it into a ball. And then 18, 16. Take your size that you're looking for, this is a 13, and you just slide it right in. And then you take the little ball that you took out of the cup over here, and we are just going to put it right about there. Then you take this, make sure it's clean. You don't want no residue, I'll give you a lumpy looking bead here. And then these two fit together. Just like that, and you just roll it back and forth. And then there is your 13 millimeter ball. So then after that, what I've been trying to do is pick the ones that have the better corners, like that one or this one. I like that corner better than I like this one. So I'm going to stick my pen into that one. Then you're going to find a spot here on your bead and push it down in there. Now to help it stick, you want to take the back end here and push it down into the bead so it's actually stuck on the bead. And then you're going to put another one, and you want fairly close. going to do this for your first row to go all the way around. Go ahead and leave a little opening I would. I haven't decided maybe I want to put a gemstone in there to brighten it up or what so. Put a bead in there. And you gotta touch this with a light touch. A lot of times I can't even feel it. That one's a little bigger than what it should be. Okay, so now we wanna kinda keep this over here, push this over here. And get that right up in there. 
and there is your first row. Then you will do that again with your next row. For instance, this one's going to go in between, like that. And you're going to keep doing this side by side. With your pieces. And I have cat hair in there. What happens when I have three cats and they think three desk is their bed? And two of them aren't even mine. Over. Let's go with that point. Right next to it, and then you just want to kind of tip that down. And if it's not sticking down the way you want it, just push that down. You don't want to push too hard because we don't want to do any distortion to the ball and feed itself. See how that one turned on me? Oops. Yeah. I'll put this one right up in here. It's not hard to do, it's tedious. Stay up a little bit. Yeah. And see, you can see our first row here, and then where I got the second row started right here. I'll do that all the way around. And then go on. I usually do two of these, at a, two rows at a time on these, so I don't get them mixed up. This is what we're going to do. I'll finish rolling these up. Like that. Oops. be difficult today. Not like they want to see my hair all day long. I'm going to push this down. And 
and as you kind of go over the hump, you're going to have like little tiny gaps right in here. That's okay. It's going to give you more of a 3D look. Unless you don't like it, but I like it, so. You can even pull some of these back, too. They haven't already stuck to each other. So I'm going to do that. When I get done, I'm going to get something like this, except with the variegated colors. And I'll show you how to do this part back here in the next video. So. Do I have a measure? Oh, there it is. Okay, this is the bead I was thinking about make, trying to make it into a flower. But this bead is very big. It's a lot bigger than what I wanted. That's why I started going, that's why I went down to the 13 millimeter one. This one here is the first one I did. And it was a little on the big side. And then I did that one. And I didn't like the red in it. It should have been shiny red. But I'm going to go ahead and put some of that um, resin on top of it and see what type of spark it gives me or shine it gives me. But on these ones here, I think I'm going to go ahead and leave them like this and maybe just add some um, green leaves around the bottom, maybe. So, so I'm going to let this go. I'll get that done and I will be back with you in the next video. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope I helped anybody with anything. If you have questions, please email me or leave down below. Thank you. Bye-bye.